Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. We talk about horror movies on this show. And of course it's October, it is the month of Halloween. And funnily enough, the movie we're talking about today has Halloween in the title. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. I, often, I, I always call it Halloween 6, but I always forget that 6 isn't actually in the title. They, they took a number for mm-hmm. this one, for whatever reason. Which is really annoying because it's supposed to be kind of like following four and five, which both had the same title. Kind of like it was the the something of Michael Myers. Mm-hmm. They've taken out the number. That just annoys me on a on an OCD level. But anyway, mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about Halloween Six, which is typically considered a pretty poor version, uh, or pretty <laughs> poor sequel. Uh, for the record, we watched the theatrical cut for this review. However, I have seen the producer's cut before, and I did actually rewatch the last ten minutes of the producer's cut as well just for comparison's sake because i wanted to remember how different the ending was uh, and i can sort of uh, talk about those as we as we go uh, but we will start spoiler free as we usually do mm-hmm. uh, and there you go so just just for, for reference as well i'll make sure there's some links in the corner to the halloween playlist because we did two through five last year we did do one as well two years ago it's not very good though it's, it's an old video before we you know arguably we may not be good now either but it, it, we were definitely worse at one point once upon a time so we'll probably redo the first one at some point maybe next year with the remakes mm-hmm. but the plan this year is to do six h2o and resurrection or six seven and eight if you want to just put in plain numbers so mm-hmm. you can expect those all this week or so and the build-up to halloween tim you've been very quiet so i'll ask the question very quickly <laughs> do you like halloween six the curse of michael myers uh, well, first of all, I do just want to mention real quick that it is ungodly hot <laughs> in my apartment <laughs> right now. Uh, here in Los Angeles, it was a little over 100 degrees today. Right now, it's a, at about 98, and my apartment tends to get like an oven. So I apologize uh, if I'm a little out of it. But uh, this was actually my first time seeing this one. Uh, I know I've seen... Whoa. Eight- well, this is a bombshell to me, I did not know this was uh, your first viewing. Yeah, I, I think oh. I might have mentioned it um, last year. So when we were doing all the Halloweens, uh, again, this wasn't um, as much of a franchise as on my radar growing up. Uh, I'd obviously seen the first one. And then, uh, you know, I'd seen the second and third one at some point. Last year was my first time seeing four and five. Okay. And, um, and now I'm pretty sure that I did see uh, Resurrection in H2O because I think by then... Um, yeah, you know, I was into horror movies, and I would see whatever new one came yeah, out. And they, yeah, they were, they were new movies coming out. Yeah, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Um, uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd heard this is one was is a uh, much maligned as a uh, its well, reputation I'll, goes. I want to put it in perspective. I used to, mm-hmm. this was the worst of the franchise for me, and mm-hmm. I hated it with a passion. I, I didn't think I could hate anything more. And then Rob Zombie came and proved otherwise. <laughs> uh, so. Now it seems not that bad compared to some of the other things that come later, but it's still it's it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's yeah, it's not good. Uh, it's um, I I would say that at, at the very least, it's so crazy and dumb that like it, you know it. it I, I was kind of interested just to see how bad it was gonna get, uh, which I, I guess is better than saying well at least it wasn't just boring and I would like you know was checking my watch or something you know as it went i at least i was like wow this uh this is pretty dumb uh but let's see where they're going and i actually in one of our earlier reviews uh this month when we did leatherface Mm. i i had mentioned that like two minutes into the movie i was like whoa okay i i think i know what type of movie we're in here for this one beat that it was like two seconds into the movie and i was like okay we're going this route all right <laughs> let's see what happens uh that, that, but... that's that's the that's the main problem with this movie before you get down to like what the script's like and you know pacing and kill quality and you know and it's not all bad there is some positives you can probably give to certain things in it but <laughs> It's the direction in which this is taken. Now, they set this up at the end, end of Halloween 5. There was a sort of mysterious tease at the end of Halloween 5 when Michael is broken out of prison by a mysterious figure with a steel toe cap boots. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, and this this kind of follows that path. And there, there's basically... 
I, we'll save it for spoilers to what it actually <laughs> is. But let's just say they actually give a reason for why Michael's evil, why he is the way he is, and they give him a purpose. And all of it is skin crawlingly bad because the whole <laughs> the reason why Halloween worked, the reason why Michael Myers, the reason why the shape is such a good villain is because he has no purpose. He's just evil mm-hmm. incarnate. It is, that, that is the beauty of him. And this is just like here's reasons. The, the, those henchmen, the, the, <laughs> he's got collaborators. Mm-hmm. Michael Myers doesn't have collaborators. No, uh, it, it's it's a really really weird uh, turn to take. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I have no idea what they were thinking. And this is the last one with Donald Pleasant playing uh, Loomis, and mm-hmm. it's so sad to watch because he he actually died before the movie came out. He died oh. not only before the movie came out. I think he died before the reshoots because we'll talk about the. The, the cut and the differences in the cuts uh, and, uh, you know in spoilers but uh, like yeah I don't, I don't think he was at least around or healthy enough to do the reshoots when mm-hmm. the time came they had to kind of cut around the fact that they could only use footage of him from the original cut uh, but he, he he is clearly like near the end of his life as he was filming this he looks weak he's walking yeah. with, with a cane not that walking with a cane necessarily means you're going out but he just he feels like yeah that this guy there's a joke early on where he, he shouts out oh no I'm not dead I'm just retired I'm like you should be retired you you should yeah you should be home he, he he feels so feeble and weak and it feels it's almost uncomfortable to watch because you you feel like you're watching the man die yeah it's 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 a real shame uh yeah because you just get this vibe off him that you're like oh man like yeah you should be like in a bed resting and enjoying. <laughs> The final moments and, and not in this movie and yeah, they but, dragged him out for this movie of all uh, movies this this uh, film is the thing that he get dragged out and he's 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 finally year for yeah but at, at the very least though i am always happy to see him like uh like not the best context but like in terms of you know characters that i would want to show up in a halloween movie he's pretty high up there yeah um so you've got other that. characters show up that I'm like, uh, I don't think we need to see him. <laughs> mm. you, you've got you've got a, you've got the the last branch of the the Strode slash Myers family living in the Myers house. So that's kind of our sort of character set up. Uh, we we have the main character, and I say main character very loosely because honestly, it kind of doesn't really decide who its main character is all that mm-hmm. well. You, you've you've got Kara, who's uh, Kara Strode, and she's got a little son who's like five or whatever. Uh, we're kind of teasing the whole he might be an evil little kid kind of thing yeah. that's that's like a theme in the movie uh you've got her awful parents you get paul rudd who you know, <laughs> gets the introduced but you know introducing paul rudd in fact mm-hmm. he's introduced as paul stephen rudd which i mm. you never hear him say that anymore no. but that's how he's credited in this uh, mm. and he's actually playing tommy doyle he's he's meant to be the little kid from the first movie now grown up and he's all weird because he lived through that so now he's a creepy guy mm-hmm. who like spies on the Myers house and wants to <laughs> watch it and make sure things are going and he's got all these crazy theories and all this is going on uh, don't yeah. forget about Barry Sims my favourite character go on explain Barry Sims <laughs> he's like a shock jock radio DJ that uh, I, I honestly I don't really know the purpose of him in this movie uh, but he made me laugh he had a really crappy mustache. Uh, he's trying to like give serious interviews. Well, he's like doing these interviews about Michael Myers, uh, but like asking the uh, woman like, oh, uh, like about her sex life and stuff. It's such like a strange uh, thing to have. But I guess this probably would have been around the time of like Howard Stern and stuff. I, I feel like they want to get a character like that in there, <laughs> but it just feels like weird and out of place. Yeah. Uh, so he he's he, his show at the start is quite funny. It almost pokes fun at other franchises because it's, mm-hmm. some guy suggests that Michael Myers is in space now. He's like Michael oh, yeah. Myers in space. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to happen. I have no doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so you've got all these things, and obviously I, I can't really talk about what I don't like with the plot until we get spoilers. Uh, I, I will say that there was a couple of things that. Yeah, you know, we're better than I remember. There's a couple of okay kills uh, that have some yeah. suspense. Um, particularly on, there's a nice sort of rake one. There's there's a a fun ele- electrocution one at one point. Like there's a couple. Oh, of, actually, yeah, I did. Yeah, that. <laughs> there's a couple of decent kills, uh, and they have a little bit of suspense. Uh, and at least some of the kills, it feels like the director's trying to mimic what a Halloween kill sequence should feel like. You know, in terms of the suspense, yeah. the music, 
Uh, that said, the music has it's, it's, it's got all the themes of Halloween, but they're all kind of remixed and new versions. And the one that really stuck out to me, obviously the main ones kind of got like a sort of guitar in it as well now and stuff. But the the main one that stuck out to me has been really different is uh, the chase theme. You know, you know dun, 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 dun. That in this is just drums, and it's like really loud bangs, it's like. <laughs> and it's, 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 that's all it is and it was kind of like one of the problems I had with the soundtrack actually is that this has some of the loudest jump scare noises I have ever heard in a movie mm-hmm. uh, at least on the 5.1 track on the Blu-ray it is like so loud uh, mm-hmm. like early on like, the, the brother character like, like jumps out behind the, uh, the sister and scares her and it's not even like a proper scare it's just that they're outside talking and he kind of jumps behind her but as he does it we just get this <laughs> in the soundtrack <laughs> And it is so over the top loud for for the the little jump scale that it could have been, and it's just so yeah. over the top. And I was kind of feeling that later on when it was like, <laughs> I, I just I couldn't believe how lo- because part of what makes it so creepy is that it is just a piano and the original just din din din. You know, it's just a piano, and I, I realize I've just been doing noises for the last like, minute, but <laughs> like it's just it's so over the top and like just it's lacking the subtlety that actually made it work. Uh, so, mm. critique for that. Uh, I, I guess it didn't really stand out to me that much. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's better than like you know other music in the franchises. You know, especially like the first mm. one, obviously. Um, but it didn't really uh, stand out as being that much of a problem to me. I'll give you but, a positive. Uh, I'll, I'll do give you a positive though. The mask is probably the best it's looked since the first mm-hmm. movie. Okay. Yeah. It's the one I'm thing. It's that. the one thing six has going for it is that because I I love four, <laughs> but the mask in four looks pretty shitty. Uh, the mask yeah. in six is not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, my my memory on four and five uh, aren't great. Uh, I only watched them the one time last year, but I, I do think that was something that like uh, I, I remember kind of sticking out. Is uh, mm. I guess Michael, not even just the mask. I feel like Michael Myers in general didn't look as you know good as he usually does, but. Yeah, he wasn't bad in this one. Yeah, actually, th- just just to sort of clarify, actually, why we watched the the theatrical cut for this now, mm-hmm. especially since I now know that this was Tim's first uh, first viewing. <laughs> but I uh, the reason why we watched the theatrical cut is because I wanted to talk about it as the mess that it came out as, as the experience. Because <laughs> sure, the producer's cut does have an official release now, but for a long time it didn't. It was like you could only get it via bootleg, and it was only you know it was this really crappy quality. Um, I never saw it until it got the official release and I watched it uh, sort of properly, but um, I will say this, right? For years, people who had seen the bootleg of the producer's cut were like, no, nah, the producer's cut of Halloween 6 is like the, the, the second best Halloween movie. It's right up there, almost as good as the original. I have heard people say that. What yeah. are you people on? You're on the hard crack. Seriously. The, so- it's, don't get me wrong, it's a better movie than the theatrical cut because the theatrical cut is a butchered mess and it makes more <laughs> sense. But everything I hate about it is still there. You people are crazy. Six is garbage regardless of which cut you're watching. All right? So I'm I'm really interested in that because uh, I remember when it first came out, which I think was last year. Uh, mm, maybe two or the years. year before. Yeah, maybe two years ago now. Okay, um, but yeah, I remember when it was coming out, and I, I saw like people post about it online saying like, "Finally, the producer's cut's available!" Oh my god, having a viewing party at my house, and then I was talking about how I was watching this, uh, you know, online yesterday, and um, Jesus Christ, wait till <laughs> that helicopter it's flies by. It's not loud. You can go. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, when I said I was watching this yesterday, people were like, oh, you better be watching the producer's cut or else you made a mistake. And I really, I, again, I haven't seen the producer's cut yet. I'm sure it's certainly better, but there's so much wrong with the story in this one that I can't imagine there'd be anything added in the producer's cut to make it better. <laughs> the, the base idea for this movie, the core idea is wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong it doesn't matter how because like I'm saying some of the kills are actually pretty when I watch that again, I, I don't watch 6 often right clearly right 
And I'm like, oh yeah, some of these kills are okay. It's not, it's not terrible. Like, I hate what starts the initial like chase of the movie, but the actual chase when we get to like the bus station and like Michael's stalking his victim, like it's not bad. It's like kind of Halloween and it, mm-hmm. it it works. Like it's okay. It's, it's a pale imitation of the first movie, but it is at least they're trying to do like a, an okay sequel mm-hmm. at times. But the, the core plot, all of this backstory, this retconning of reasons into Michael's history, mm-hmm. why he does what he does, it is awful. I ha- I want none of it. It's only it's actually kind of worse than the producer's cut because as much as it makes more sense, it has way more of the stuff I don't like as well because it's like oh here's yeah. like more of this stuff that explains the backstory. But, but I feel like the only way they could make it better would be instead of a cut where they include more stuff is just like a cut where they take like all the story stuff out and it's just like oh Michael Myers you know chasing and killing some people like that might be a decent movie it'd make even less but... sense but it would <laughs> piss me off less I suppose yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's fair uh, yeah here's a, here's a little weird thing I, I kind of noticed watching it as well this time is that there's not really a like it doesn't progress that much like I feel like it's going into its final act where everything's going down and it's like you know we're already I know we're into the movie and I feel like I've basically not been introduced to the characters that much like, like in the other movies, in the first movie, like you, you meet, you meet uh, Laurie. I was like her name. You meet Laurie, and you, it builds up her day. Oh, you know, she'll be babysitting, and then she's babysitting. Like you feel like you get to know her over the movie before the, the shit goes down. I feel like when the, the 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 final kind of like big chunk of the movie starts in this one, I've mm-hmm. seen the main character like twice. I've seen Paul Rudd like three times. It just everything just starts going down as if we're, you know. Loomis has shown up to town and he's talked to like one person and it just it feels like maybe there's just too many characters going on or whatever but to, to be completely honest I kind of had like a hard time following it like not that it's super complicated or anything and to be fair maybe it was because uh, I was tired and extremely hot no it's not Tim, Tim but... it's, it's a shitty script it does not <laughs> it does not structure a story there's no through line it just mm-hmm. the stuff just happens and then when stuff has to connect it just does it by coincidence it's, it's a really poorly written script like i kind of like with some of the main characters that i kept uh, getting confused i was like wait a minute like who's a part of this family and who's like not like uh oh is that the mother or the sister like there's some stuff like that that i just and i don't know maybe it's because you know you're not spending enough time with them or, or if it was shitty and i wasn't paying it just, it, as it much attention it has but... no focus it doesn't focus on what it wants you to really like zone in on and instead you just you're kind of left with all these characters that you've not really gotten to know at all by the time stuff starts going down it's just it's a it's really poorly developed in that sense it's just it's it's the kind of thing where it's harder to uh it's, it's harder for me to make this point than normal like sometimes when like a script's bad like there's some really obvious things where they, they don't pay off something or they don't set something up here it's just so poor in how it's constructed that the entire thing just c- doesn't progress or it doesn't feel like it's moved like when the stuff starts going down the third act I don't feel like I've actually had two acts of a movie to set it up. I feel like it just jumps to it and it's like, oh, stuff's happening now. Okay, right, I guess we're going. Yeah. Things are happening. Excellent. <laughs> I guess. I guess you should be happy about this. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty <laughs> strange. I don't... What I kind of wonder is, like, the, the person that made this, uh, or... You know the the couple of people like the writer and the director or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's the same person or how many you know people worked on it on that end. But like, I wonder were they like fans of the franchise? Uh, and did they think like, oh, we got a really cool idea to to beef up, you know, this character in this universe? Or were they just kind of people that were like, oh, we have to make a Halloween movie. Uh, what are we gonna do? Um, I don't know. Let's let's just do this because I think it's cool. It, it's just such a weird direction to take it in. Mm. I yeah, I hate it. I hate it with a fire of passion. <laughs> Not as much as the remakes. Well, well, obviously that's something we'll do next year. But uh, no, I, I I hate everything about this movie in, in terms of the plot, in terms of what it tries to do. I despise all of it. Mm. Uh, so uh, I had another point to make there, and I've forgotten it. But whatever, it'll come back to me maybe. Um, so I guess I'll give the spoiler warning so we can start actually right. talking about the mess that is the plot uh, and so on. So full spoilers, the movie opens with what turns out to be Jamie from 4 and 5, who is now grown up. And we're in like a weird cult cave mm-hmm. place. 
uh, and there's like a ritual with her baby, and we hear Paul Rudd like narrate about the the about evil mm. and how evils yeah. like exists and stuff, and the baby's being like getting a ceremony, they, they paint the symbol on it, and like we see these hooded figures, and I'm like, what is going on? And then it someone actually sides with Jamie, and like, a nurse like tries to help her escape because she's had a baby, she was pregnant, and. Mm. The, the, let's let's her out but michael myers of course is in pursuit and that kind of sets up the opening chunk of the movie where michael's chasing down jamie and they get to a a, a bus station and then chases her to like a, a, a farmhouse where he eventually kills her uh which is difference number one from the uh at least because i only watched the rewatch the ending of the producer's cut but i do remember that in this producer's cut jamie doesn't actually die right oh. away she actually the scenes of her in the hospital like recovering so she's not as clearly dead as she is in this cut. Well, uh, wait, but she she died um, in that barn, like on that thresher thing, right? Yeah, she didn't that die that way. I don't think she has the same death. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to say, like, that would have been really weird if the producer's cut. They still show that scene, but they show her recovering. <laughs> That's why I thought, like, you were I can't remember. I like, honestly oh. can't remember, but she does not <laughs> She does not die outright. She, she is taken to hospital, and she's in hospital for a bit. Uh, and I, th- I think it's like the evil guy, you know, the, the guy with the hat that shows up and kills her. I, 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 it's been a while. Like I Doctor say, I, Wynn. I can't remember. Yeah, I think it's been t- it's been uh, two years since I watched the producer's cut, so I can't yeah. I can't remember the, the the bulk of the changes early on, other than that. Um, but I, like I say, I rewatched the final ten minutes just to compare the ending because the endings where the big changes happen. Uh, so we'll get to that. But yeah. but uh, yeah, so like two seconds into the movie, you have Paul Rudd narrating about like the nature of evil and then you have these people in like you know hooded cloaks and or robes or wh- whatever in like a candlelit uh cave room i, I am already burned up with fire this is not halloween stop it what are you yeah, doing like, if this if this was any other movie i probably would have been on board like oh this is stuff that i i like and i, I could get behind but for this movie which is such a such built on such a very simple premise you have uh a woman in the suburbs being stuck by the boogeyman it's like it, that's that's all you need uh and to this to I, I think this is like one of the worst things about like prequels and stuff and obviously this isn't a prequel but it does you know kind of set up backstory stuff that's not needed and when you try to make something larger than what it has to be like th- this has never been a big epic movie like it's uh it's been like you know very grounded and but you're trying to give it this you know big giant sense of purpose and like it misses the point it misses yeah. the point of what made the first movie work uh and it's just yeah because so we find out like, this family's living in the myers house and they're they're hanging out there and the the, the little son is kind of like because the, the the grandfather's a complete asshole and he's like he slaps his daughter at one point the, the or i mean or being character Kara, and the son like holds a knife up to him, and I'm like, okay, we're doing this. And the, the kid's an awful actor, by the way. Mm-hmm. That's point number one. But we, 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 Tommy's living across the street, and he spies on the the house, and he like he hears because the uh, Jamie when she's running from Michael gets to a phone, a payphone, and she phones in the radio show and tries to tell them that Michael's coming after her. What, Which, by why? the way, that's who she phones, not not the police. Yeah, that why. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> what she phones it, in the the, jo- the the shock jockey who's like making fun of people for the michael myers and, theories and it's not even like it, it'd be one thing if she was phoning like uh some type of radio show that was designed to help people or or something like it'd still be a hell of a lot stupider than and, just calling nine one one. but at least how, how does she know the number for the radio station how does she just happens to know that yeah. I guess, like, he seems to be, like, the most popular thing in this town. Maybe, I guess, everyone knows him. But I... That's uh, a stretch. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's still stupid. Oh, uh, God. But, yeah, makes absolutely no sense. So, so Paul Rudd hears this over the radio, and he, he analyzes the tape. He, rec- he recorded it, so he's analyzing the tape, and he hears bus noises in the background. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be specific, it's, 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 that sounds even more silly than it actually is. He, he hears the, the speaker uh, mentioning, like, you know, this bus will depart at this time. Although, she's there when it's closed, and 
while we're in the scene, I'm pretty sure there's no sound. Like, when we actually see her there making the phone call, yeah. I'm fairly certain we don't hear the, the voice saying things, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm misremembering. But he hears that, so he goes to the bus station, and luckily, because obviously she uh, she hid her baby before she left again so that Michael <laughs> would get the baby, and he goes there, and sure enough, no one else has spotted the baby in the bathroom. <laughs> he finds the baby, and he takes it for himself. He, <laughs> he sees Dr. Loomis at the hospital, uh, says a couple of cryptic things, and that's all we see of him until he he, go, he goes and like, interacts with uh, Kara's son on his way home from school. And then Kara comes home from college. She's like you know, going back to college a little bit older to, you know, write her life, I guess. But mm-hmm. she comes back and he's there. And he's like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing with my son in our house? And mm-hmm. then it cuts to... He's like, oh, well, I've got stuff to tell you. And then it cuts to them get into his house, into his like you know weird, crazy room with the telescope and the, the the newspaper clippings in the wall. And she's basically just accepted after one short conversation that we don't even get to see that she's in danger and that there might be a serial killer coming to her house. Mm-hmm. And she's just on board. She's listening to him. And then he starts explaining stuff. He gets his little 1995 computer out and he's like, oh, God. here, these, here's the star <laughs> charts and here's these symbols that mean these things. Mm-hmm. And he starts talking about how the, like the tribes of the olden days they would mm-hmm. have like one family be killed to save the entire tribe implying that's why michael wants to kill all his family members but it's because he's like he's like actually been a hero he's saving the the rest mm-hmm. of the planet because he's sacrificing this entire family mm-hmm. shut up you <laughs> asshole shut up you you stupid you you self-indulgent writer who wrote this crap what is wrong with you? This is not how... Oh, my... oh, it makes me angry, Tim. So, a uh, couple of things. One, I feel like this was at a time where um, it didn't matter what you had on the computer. As long as you had something, people were going to, like, accept that you are smart. Because uh, he, like, pulls up the computer like, you know, he's about to show something crazy. But all he shows are just, like, these kind of 3D stones that, like, circle around. Like, it's not, like, really helping his case that much. Like, he could have easily just shown her a picture of stones as well and been like, oh, these are the, uh, you know, stones. He mentions that, oh, this, star, this sign, you know, the Sam Hain sign, it only comes out every couple of Halloweens. Like, you know, it doesn't, and that's, <laughs> that's when he appears. And I'm like, no. really? He's making sacrifices when the star sign's out? Now, I will admit, when he did start, start talking about, like, you know, uh, like runes and ancient tribes. I did get a little excited because I thought, are they going to try to tie this into Halloween 3? But uh, no, there's no, no such luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, that may have been at least... I, I still would have hated it, but it at least may have been slightly interesting if they yeah. did that, if that's what they were going to try and do. Uh, but they couldn't, though, because in Halloween 3, you see Halloween 1 playing in TV, so we're clearly not in the same universe. Yeah. <laughs> It's impossible, Tim. That would open a whole can of worms continuity-wise. <laughs> I'm sure they were very concerned about that with this movie. So while that's all going on, Kara has a brother who has a girlfriend who also goes to college, and they've set up a a, a radio DJ. This, this radio host comes to town, and he does like a <laughs> live show with them. And the whole idea here is that Halloween's been banned in Haddonfield since 89 when Halloween 5 happened because people kept getting killed. So they just didn't have Halloween anymore, as if that's what's to blame. To be fair, that like, I could kind of see that. <laughs> sure, but this is like, oh, Halloween's back, baby, and like we're yeah. we're going to do this. But this is one of these things where I don't, I actually don't mind this idea. Like the same with the radio host at the start, like all these myths of who Michael Myers is and where he is now. Like I actually kind of like those ideas on their own, but they don't actually really do anything with them. They're kind of like mm-hmm. you, you get so little of this. Like again, these two characters, this 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 couple, the brother and the girlfriend. We have them in, like, two scenes before we're actually at this party. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we get them... We get the brother, obviously, at the house with the sister. We then get them when the girlfriend's introduced, walking to college. And then... Is that the last time we see them before we get to the party and they're in costume? I, I, I feel like it was... I think so. I, like, you barely get to know them, so... Like, I'm not sure why I, I should care that much. Well, I, the brother's name, uh, I believe, was Tim, so that made me care a little bit. But uh, other than that, also, yeah, but yeah, really... that's, that's a good point. The, the the kid who may be evil is called Danny because you know the Shining. Oh, I didn't even make that reference, but yeah. I can see that yeah. little bl- blonde kid. He hears the voices, Ooh. like the Shining. <laughs> get it? 
<laughs> Remember a much better movie? <laughs> oh, that's a much better movie. That's that's correct. <laughs> uh, so 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 yeah, I have this party, um, and again, talking about good ideas. There's actually a really kind of nice idea where this couple, the brother and the, the girlfriend, come back to the house. Uh, at, at this point, you know, Paul Rudd's left them because Paul Rudd, for some reason, leaves Kara and her son at his place and says, "Whatever you do, don't go back to your house." The idea that Michael may be in the house at all times, don't go back. And he's like, "I'll, I'll be back later." He just goes to the party and just sort of stands around for a long time. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Like I think yep. he's, he's supposed to be meeting Loomis, right? You know, I, actually, you know what made me laugh uh, is there. There's like a scene of him like walking through the party. Mm. Um, and it's kind of just like walking by like this flaming barrel and stuff. And uh, so after I watched the movie, I was looking at uh, the special features that are on the Blu-ray, Blu-ray, and the, the really Blu-ray. <laughs> the Blu-ray. Uh, but there really wasn't that much. But there were uh, some trailers, and I was like, I'm kind of curious to see what the trailer was like for this movie. And I watched it, and um, I, there might have been two or three trailers. I only watched two, but like each one uh like starts like with the scene of um paul rudd walking through the party but like they slow it down and make it like seem really menacing like he's the bad guy or something uh, i don't know it's just really weird i'm going to look at these afterwards now i think i want to see how they market this piece of shit but yeah he, he goes to the party he finds a dead body and accomplishes nothing and then comes home with loomis uh but that's basically it but he's just kind of standing around at a party for a long time it's, it's not yeah. and this is when the movie starts to ramp up because the, the couple, like I said, the brother and the, the girlfriend come back to the house and mm. they get kinky, they have sex upstairs mm. and they set up this idea that Kara can see them through the telescope and she's looking at them and she sees like uh, the, the, the the girlfriend and she phones her and she's like, hey, uh, it may be dangerous, get out. And we've, we've already seen the brother die in the shower. He's been killed. And the, the girlfriend's on the bed and she's answering the phone. She's like, hey, what's up? And Michael stinks up behind her. And... <laughs> And Kara witnesses her be murdered. She sees Michael kill her through the telescope. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is kind of interesting that Michael doesn't know she's across the street and she can see him through the through the telescope. This is kind of cool. And then she sees her son, who, by the way, throughout this entire movie, just does things to get into danger, even though it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Like, why would he walk back to the house? I, I don't even know. But she looks down at the street and her son's walking into the house where Michael Myers currently is. So she has to make the choice to knowingly go into the house when she knows Michael is there. I like that idea on a p- okay. pure fundamental kind of like the, the, the hero has to make the choice to go into danger. I like that, mm-hmm. right? That works. It's a nice little idea. Uh, unfortunately, the plot around it is complete bananas, but mm-hmm. as an idea, it's okay. Now you kind of got me thinking with the, um, you know, Danny shining kind of thing. I wonder if uh, this was supposed to be maybe a little bit of a reference to uh, that Hitchcock movie, is that rear window where the guy's like looking through the telescope? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Possibly. Um, but we, uh, now, so at this point, wait, we, we've already gone past the uh, the parents getting murdered, right? Oh, yeah, they, they, they get murdered yeah. randomly throughout the movie. Yeah. They just, and again, the mother, it's like her second scene she gets killed. The father, it's mm-hmm. like his third scene he gets killed. But yeah. Which I, I do like the uh, the father death scene, uh, which you alluded to earlier, where he gets electrocuted, which that in and of itself is like okay or whatever. But just the fact that his head explodes, I was like, okay, all right, you got my attention. Movie. Do you know, what, do you know what's funny is that the mother's death is so so simple because she yeah. just gets like stabbed with like a hatchet or something, and you don't even get to see it. You just see blood spatter on the sheet, like there's like, a, like the yeah. outside, and it's like the, all the the, the washings up on the clotheslines, mm-hmm. and. You just see the blood splatter on the white sheet. That's all we see. And then you get to his... So it's like, okay, they're all going to be tame deaths. They're going to be that interesting. And then his head explodes. <laughs> like, I, Yeah, I, I wonder if they did that because they went to the trouble of setting up that this guy is, like, the hugest asshole. Mm, uh, yeah, he's awesome. So he needs a, a little bit of a bigger death. Yeah, maybe. But, uh, Jamie's he, he's death, a real piece of shit. <laughs> Jamie's death is pretty good as well with the, the, the rake thing or the, you know, the, the, uh, the farm pressure. equipment. Yeah that kind of expands inside her. Uh, mm-hmm. Given that, like I said, like we said earlier, she's alive for longer. Mm-hmm. Like, she's she's not as quite as dead in the other cut. I wonder if this scene wasn't there, if they went back and made a more flashy death scene. So, because they're like, oh, the deaths aren't good enough. So maybe they added another one. They're like, okay, let's do another fancy one where there's more blood okay. and stuff. Possibly, yeah. They may have done that. They may have thought, oh, this is too weak. We have to go back and add more death. Uh, 
<laughs> There's more deaths always, but it good. needs more death. <laughs> I can, so I can be a producer. So you know, so you've got Kara sneaking through the house. Michael, like, chases after us. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's not great, but it's not bad either. It's like if the if the movie was made up of some of these like you know uh, suspense sequences and kill sequences, it'd be okay. Like it wouldn't be great, yeah. but it would be an okay little like you know number six movie. Like, you know, as far as the, as far as sure. the the sixth in a franchise goes, it would be okay. Uh, <laughs> But you know, eventually the kid gets out, she pushes Michael down the stairs and we go through these motions. <laughs> uh, but then they get back to like uh, to Paul Rudd's place and they're, they're trying to figure things out. You know, Loomis is there, all the rest mm-hmm. of it. And it turns out that the woman who owns that house, the landlord lady, is working with the evil cult. She's also involved. Mm-hmm. And she like has the son... And then she's, he, she's like babysitting him at, at this point. Yeah, and, and then, then yeah. the evil doctor, what's his face? When Doctor Wynn. Doctor Wynn. who's an actor I know from a bunch of stuff. He's got one. Of, he's one of those actors who pops up in a lot of things. Uh, but he he's got the kid and he's wearing the hat, so you realize, oh, that was him from the end of five, and that was him earlier on in the movie when we saw the guy. You know, it was all silhouette, and you see just him walking in the hat. That's him. Mm-hmm. That's that's him, and he's the evil guy, uh, and. This is where the movie starts to get really confusing because it starts to, you can tell they cut things out because the he's like, all right, uh, be careful with the woman. And they, they, they grab the other, they, they grab Loomis and they grab Paul Rudd and the woman like runs from them and she goes upstairs and just as she, that's when she sees the kid with the woman and when she's about to get grabbed, she jumps out the window and she lands on the ground. And then the movie just cuts to the same spot Right, it's this exact same shot looking down at her on the ground, except she's not there anymore. And now Loomis and Paul Rudd are standing there, and they're looking <laughs> down. And I'm like, "What just happened? Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, why, why she's gone now, and they're standing there? I thought they were grabbed. And mm-hmm. in the dialogue, like a minute later, they say, "Oh, we got drugged, and they've just, they've just <laughs> taken her. They didn't care about them. They just knocked them out and took her." And I'm like show me like show me them waking up inside the house like establish this like this is a scene this is a, an example of just basic movie making uh is not being adhered to because they made it confusing because of the way they cut this they cut to the same location with her missing and them just standing there and given the information we were shown in the previous two scenes this does not make sense it is confusing it actively makes the plot harder to follow through the, the way it's been edited it is 101 what you should not do yeah, uh, it looks pretty bad when you're watching it, but the way you actually started describing it did sound kind of cool to me because it made it sound like it was almost mirroring, mirroring like the last scene of the first movie when you know Michael Myers you know falls out the window and then when they look you know he's not on the ground anymore. Uh, well, yeah, but it doesn't cut away to like if it, if it cut to like oh, someone right, looking right. down and then look back, it'd be fine. It doesn't. It just cuts to the same shot. It's I'm almost sure. like she just vanishes out the scene. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's really bad it's it's terrible editing i keep thinking now though that would be a cool scene though if like michael myers was chasing someone and then like they pulled a michael myers on him and like he went to look and they weren't there and i don't know um but yeah it's uh really ramps up to the the shittiness towards the also uh, tim are you forgetting that happens in h2o Yes, because it's been a long time okay. since I've just, seen it. <laughs> right, just, just point it out. And all the comments gonna, are like, but Tim, yeah. that happens in the next one, you idiot. <laughs> uh, I, well, that makes me look uh, more forward to watching it. Um, but yeah, uh, this, you know what, the, the ending feels very like video gamey to me. Like it feels kind of like the end of Resident Evil or something where, yeah, you kind of spend like, you. Whole... <laughs> Not like in a necessarily a good way but it's like all of a sudden you know when you're spending most of the movie like you know in like the houses and suburbs and stuff and then all of a sudden you're kind of like in this i don't know like like weird lab thing it's the, it's the mental hospital that michael was at growing up uh okay um but i don't know it seems like a weird uh change of pace i, I guess probably like the way you said it's edited it is kind of like oh all of a sudden yeah, we're here now L- Loomis is like, okay, I know where he's going. So they go they go to the hospital and they get there and Loomis is like, right, you stay here, Paul, or Tommy. Um, I'm going to go and deal with something. And he goes to see you know, Dr. Wynn and then Loomis just disappears. 
We never see what happens to him. He's just <laughs> like we see him in that scene, and then we never see him again. And the reason why we never see him again is because they reshot most of the ending, and Loomis didn't come back, or I should say, Donald Pleasance didn't come back for the reshoots. I I don't know if he's already passed away or if like he was just too sick to come and shoot more stuff. But they mm. clearly they, they couldn't use any like the only footage you see of him for the rest of the movie is what they could kind of still use right at the very end. The rest mm. of it is completely different, and we'll talk about what's in the producer's cut in a minute. The theatrical cut. Basically, Paul Rudd runs a, runs a, uh, runs a, around. I don't know why I had so much trouble saying that. He runs around and he ends up finding uh, Kara, who's like in a in a cell. She's she's trapped in a cell, and he like Michael's coming towards him and he like he bashes the door in and he just gets her out in time and it becomes a chase sequence like where Michael's like hunting them down and they're hiding a little bit. This is it's okay. Um, but then they eventually, they, they get to like um, a, 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 a room in the hospital where they can kind of see uh, Dr. Wynn and other people. And one or two of them are in like cult outfits. Like they've got cult, like, uh, cult outfits on. And like Dr. Wynn cracks a joke to Willem, hey, you can stop wearing that now. And they're, they're, in, they're into an operating room. And some of them, he's getting ready to operate on someone. Hmm. And I don't know who or why or what they're doing or what the purpose of this is. The movie's not told me. The movie's not established why they're operating on anyone. You get the sense that this is for a, an evil purpose. I mean... Mm-hmm. An evil operation. Like, because for a second there, I was thinking, was it Michael? But no, Michael was still chasing them. He was still stalking everyone else. Like, you know, he was still I, stalking Karen and Paul. Uh, so... On, honestly, I forget what... Uh, do they have the baby still at this point? I, I don't even remember. The bad guys like, have the baby. They've got it in a... Okay. Uh, one of the, the, the little hospital one of the crib cult. thing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the, the, the newborns yeah. go in these little trays, you know, the little oh, right, right, right. The things they've got that, and they notice that her son, you know, the little evil kid, mm-hmm. he's like there as well. But so w- one thing uh, that I kind of kept getting, you know, confused throughout the movie is I wasn't sure if they wanted the baby or the slightly older son, and I, I guess they wanted both. Yeah, they seem to want both. Uh, the, <laughs> so they've got the baby, they've got a the son. She almost runs out for her son, but he's like, and Paul like grabs him and says, like, no, that's stupid. You're going to alert them to her presence. So I don't know why they're operating on someone. I don't know who they're operating on. It makes no sense. Well, I mean, and the, the, reason it, why I th- the reason why I think it might, might be supposed to be Michael is because th- then like everyone in the room gets killed. Like Michael kills everyone in the operating room. He turns on the cult for some reason. <laughs> Again, I don't know why. Hey, man, it's uh, even... Uh you know, a caged wild animal, it's eventually will turn on its master. Shopped. <laughs> was there a reason why they kept showing, like, his burnt-up, disfigured hand? Was that, like, significant for any reason? Not in this cut. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe in the other cut, but not in this one. Uh, mm-hmm. So, again, I want to emphasize this. The, the evil cult leader and his followers, some of whom are in, like, cult costumes, some of them are just dressed as doctors, are operating on someone in an operating room. I don't know why. I don't know who. I don't know for what purpose or anything. Like, I, don't, I don't understand any of it. And eventually... I mean, just because well, they're evil, they still have jobs. Like, they, they took a Hippocratic oath. No, but they the, probably the, still have no, patience. Tim, to... The implication in the scene <laughs> is that this is an evil thing they're doing. Yeah. Like, whatever they're doing is for a bad reason. I just, but I don't know what. I don't know why. Are they operating on Loomis? Is that the? Impl- it doesn't seem like it because when he shows up later, it's not like he's been in the operating table. And plus, Michael kills everyone in the room anyway. So why wouldn't he kill the person on the table? I, d- I don't understand any of this. It makes no goddamn sense. Hmm. And it's not. This I is a, think of it. None of this is in the the the, uh, the producer's cut, by the way. This is all. At least I don't <laughs> think it is. Maybe it's further back in the producer's cut, and I've just skipped it. But like. It can be, because he kills everyone, including Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn dies in this scene, in this cut, which he doesn't in the producer's cut. So, that this blows my mind. This makes no <laughs> goddamn sense. Man, you're about as fired up as uh, I am when I talk about Leprechaun 3. It's so stupid. It just makes no sense. It's like, how hard is it to write, write a scene and have it give it a purpose? So, Michael mm-hmm. kills everyone in the room. As he's doing that, that's when uh, Paul and Kara decide to grab the kids and make a run for it. We have a bit of a chase. Uh, there's a locked gate they can't get through. There's, you know, there's some, some of the chases okay. Like they're, they're, they're hiding down tunnels and stuff and Michael's chasing after them. It's, it's just whatever. Uh, but eventually they get to a weird experiment room 
where there's like <laughs> there's like babies and like test tube things and there's other See, there's other like cult symbols with each one. This is what kind of reminds me of like <laughs> the ending of Resident Evil, uh, just like the the original the first PS game. I don't know the, something about it. Just all of a sudden, being... there's one yeah. room with like <laughs> test subjects. Yeah, and like what are they implying here that they're trying to like grow other evil people? I don't know. Maybe I guess you need a whole crop of Michael Myers. So so like all of them are hiding in the room. The, the, the older kids get the baby and like protecting him. Paul Rudd's like injecting Michael with things, random things that are in the room. I, to I wasn't really down. sure specifically what those were supposed to be or the effect they were supposed to have. Of course, it's just you're like right. a green a green liquid he's injecting them with. Tim, we don't know. Paul Rudd's character <laughs> doesn't know. Michael doesn't know. The writer of this movie doesn't know. The director doesn't know. He could be making them better. He could be giving them some type of antibody or something. He's like, oh, thanks. I, I needed that uh, flu shot or something. Yeah, this could be the T-virus he's injecting them with. This is going to just make them stronger. Oh, God, there we go. Damn it. Tyrant Myers. Oh, uh, dear. Uh, so, so it's a bit of a fight. It's, it's, it's kind of dull in how simple it is because he just like grabs a pipe and beats Michael over the head with it repeatedly. Uh, yeah. And they both get, 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 you know, hit badly. But they, they kind of win and they run out of the room. And that's when Donald Pleasance is one or two shots that they can still use from this portion of the movie. <laughs> and the reason why they can only use one or two shots is because in this portion of the movie, in the producer's cut, Paul Rudd was disguised as a cult member, so he's wearing this cult uniform, which he doesn't have in this version, so they can't use any of this, the shots with them together until they get outside and Paul Rudd's taken off the outfit. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's quite funny. But <laughs> So they get away, and they basically just make a run for it, and there's this really awkward cut, actually, where it just cuts to them outside already in the car, and like, hey, come with us, uh, Dr. Loomis. And he's like, no, I'll just stay here. And so that, that cuts really abruptly. You can tell watching this version that they edited the shit out of it to like try and have it make sense, but it doesn't. Uh, so we have this final shot of Loomis. It's just kind of ominous. There's like a sort of like scary edit to the mask just lying on the floor in the room where Michael was. And then it ends on a shot of a Halloween outside in front of the, the, the original house, like, going out like the, the jack o lantern like uh, flickers out um and you hear a scream and you hear a scream by the way there's a couple of edits like that in this one where it does like a scream noise and it like flickers the like the cult symbol or something it's just a really annoying transition where it's meant to be like a, a jump scare in the transition and it's just kind of bad like <laughs> it's just cheap shit like it, mm-hmm. it's the least of this movie's problems like like i say all, all these other things we're discussing but Thoughts so, on the ending, Tim? Uh, I've, uh, my rant's finished. You can talk for a bit. I actually liked it quite a bit. Um, no, just kidding, obviously. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, it's pretty dumb. Uh, it's, you know, cut to bits. Uh, and, yeah, there's no... Like like you were saying earlier, you really haven't spent any time with these characters, so that it doesn't feel like it's a very satisfying ending where it's like, all oh, right, like they've been through so much and no, they're they finally, haven't. you know, figure out how to rise up and, and take the fight to them. It's like, no, they're kind of just running a bit and then they hit them with a pipe. Yeah. Have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they it's, inject them with something and hit them with the pipe. And then, uh, they're all of a sudden they're in a car. That's, that's actually probably the best part of offense is when like they get the behind like a metal, like great door, you know, like a gate and Michael's mm-hmm. try to like, gra- he's grabbing Kara through it and Paul Rudd, finds what looks like a grenade launcher. I don't know why that's there, admittedly. But he grabs this weapon and he just fires it at Michael's chest point blank and it sends <laughs> Michael flying. That's pretty okay. That's a decent little I, moment. Even if it makes no sense well as a grenade launcher just kind of sitting around. Uh, mm-hmm. No, but go, go back to your point about the characters and like, we've spent no time with them. Like, there's a moment as he, like, finds Kara, like, locked up and he's like, it's me, it's me, it's, it's me. And she's like, oh, thank God. Thank God, Tommy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Maybe if you'd actually built, like, a weird relationship over the course of the movie where she kind of, like... Because at the start of the movie, like, our friend's like, oh, no, he's weird. Like, he's, like, so goddamn weird, this Tommy guy. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe if if they'd, like, spent some time, like, talking about Michael and, it, like... Because by the time they actually meet, it's already... Everything's already going down. Like, maybe if we actually got, like, a little bit of a story where she kind of learns that, okay, he's a bit weird, but maybe he actually is okay. Like, and I don't even... I don't really mean a romantic relationship, but just the idea of a relationship, like, where they mm-hmm. know each other, where when she's, like, relieved to see him at the end, I actually believe that she's relieved. Because, honestly, given what's actually happened in the movie, she's got no real reason to care about him or trust them or yeah. anything. It just... It's so... Mm-hmm. 
also uh i guess so the kids prize still evil probably yeah like, like, <laughs> i guess the fact that he helps protect the baby towards the end is maybe the the one thing where oh maybe he's not evil yeah. i guess yeah. so here's here's what well, i'm going to shock you tim uh, now i showed you some of this Uh-oh. just before we started <laughs> but in the producer's cut they actually do have a reason for having the baby and the kid there uh, in fact, okay. they dress up Kara in a white gown and they're going to sacrifice mm-hmm. her. They're going to try and make, I think, the uh, the kid sacrifice his own mother. And they've got them in this sort of rock, like, cave pit and they've got candles and really weirdly Michael Myers is, like, standing there, like, just silent throughout the whole thing. He's there with other people and they're trying to do this this, this uh, ritual. Paul Rudd, like I said, he disguises himself in a, a cult outfit so he can, like, strike at a moment's notice. Um, okay. And of course, it doesn't happen. They end up running off. But then we get this weird thing when they're running away from Michael. Paul Rudd puts out these stones with the symbols on it, and he traps Michael <laughs> in, a, in a little force field with these stones, and Michael can't walk out of it. Oh man! So, um, I it's still guess bullshit. it's still so that... on Halloween. No, I hate it. So, I mean, I was going to say that sounds like it makes it uh, an amazing movie. I, I mean, <laughs> that's all that was missing from this movie. Uh, yeah, you're, you're showing me some scenes of it. Um, I, I I still do want to go back and watch, like, the full producer's cut now to yeah, get the full mm-hmm. effect of it. Um, I, I, given the options, it's probably better than this kind of, you know, very – you know, butcher jumpy ending. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little but... bit better in the sense that because they actually have this ritual with the kid and the kid and the baby mm-hmm. are relevant, it at least means that they're kind of paying off what it actually, like, you know, why they took them in the first place. Like, what do they want them? Like, there's a reason for it. Because in the theatrical cut, they never actually get to why they want the baby or the son. They never actually get to it. Like, what, what do they want them for? I, I don't know. As the, the ritual, uh, again, kind of confuses me because... It's not just like an easy like we need to sacrifice this kid. Like okay, that's a ritual I can understand, but no, it's like because they want the kid to become the new Michael because they want him to become the killer, like kill for so, Michael thing. So it's like we want the we want to turn the kid into this killer who will then kill everyone else and then but then also, why are they Also, we find out in, in this in this ritual scene we find out uh, that Michael is the father of Jamie's kid. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. In the, <laughs> like, producer, in the producer's cut, that... they actually, they strongly hint or outright confirm that Michael is the father. Oh, Jesus. Uh, well, now I don't know what to, how to feel about the producer's cut because I sure as hell don't like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, uh... what, what does that mean exactly? Like, Michael's never been shown to even care about like sex, at least not in the sense that he wants to do it. No, and um, if that was a case, like, not that I like that, but if that is the direction you're going with, don't you think that might have been something important to let us know about at some point, like in the last movie or <laughs> the beginning of this movie or something? I mean, hell, even the, just... the fact that Jamie starts off the movie in captivity with these people pregnant is just kind of a, like we kind of oh, glossed yeah. over that, but that 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 start we begin with her in captivity. And they're waiting for her to give birth, kind of Rosemary's Baby style. Yeah. Like this is uh, th- this is really weird. Uh, I I feel like sometimes I I like to give credit for something you know being over the top and bizarre, but this just does it in like the exact opposite ways that you would want it to. Like it's, everything it's, about this is a misstep. Yeah, it's just confused with itself and. So Michael's trapped in the circle, and of course Dr. Wynn's still alive in this cut, he's not been killed. He comes up to the, into the circle with Michael, and then after we have the, the, the characters drive away, which is the same shot as we had in the theatrical cut, Loomis actually doesn't end here, he, he actually walks back inside the building, and he sees what looks like Michael lying down in the circle, and he pulls off the mask, and it's actually Dr. Wynn, like Michael switched clothes with them. Um, now admittedly, I only watched the final 10 minutes, so I can't remember if it's better explained why this lets him leave the circle. But mm-hmm. we see that Michael's actually wearing, like, the guy's hat, and we see him in silhouette and, like, a trench coat and a hat walking down this, like, creepy hallway. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because this feels like Halloween. Uh, <laughs> and Loomis gets the, the tattoo of the symbol appears in his arm in a supernatural oh, yeah. <laughs> way. Uh, 
saying that he is now linked to Michael in this call or whatever. And again, I only watched the last 10 minutes again. I can't remember if it was better explained. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, no, I hate all of this. I hated all of this. <laughs> like, I, I don't know which one I hate more. On the one hand, the theatrical cuts a confused mess. On the other hand, this is less confused, but it just gives me all this cult stuff in like more quantity. It gives me the fact that Michael raped Jamie at some point. Because I, I doubt it was consensual. I, I highly doubt Jamie was like, you know what? Uncle no. Mike, <laughs> Uncle Michael, get, yeah. let's, let's forget you're a serial killer. You're my uncle. And I'm you're wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> you're wearing a mask. Yeah. Uh, you look like a pale William Shatner. What are you doing? Uh, I, I don't know. I, who, who are these people that think this cut is so good? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like sometimes people just automatically think that anything that's like a director's cut or extended cut is better. Because I always hear people, uh, the movie you know that comes to mind that people always say is like so much better is the daredevil the director's cut and it's like oh god bro, no, it's, it's still it, garbage it's, it's still the, the same it's just more of the same bad stuff like yeah even if you're able to expand upon stuff a, a little bit or, or whatever it it can't change I, it if, if the re- outer shell is if i remember correctly one of the big reasons why people like daredevil director's cut more is because it had more lawyer scenes and like, well, sure, maybe those lawyer scenes are the best thing ever, but it does doesn't change the, the stupid fight in the playground. It doesn't change how right, bad the yeah. villain is, or any of the, the costumes, or the, like, like if you if you have a this outer shell that's like a big pile of shit, but then you have this one version where like, oh, there's a you know a tiny slice of pizza on top of it. It's like, well, it's still mostly shit. Like, I I am glad there is more pizza now, but. The, the, still, I, mean, I gotta... <laughs> There are versions like director's cuts and special editions that improve the original film, but in most cases, the original film was still pretty good. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it got better because you gave it. You know, I think I think the biggest change that I've ever seen is the Abyss, which is a James Cameron movie, because oh. the theatrical cut like actually took out a lot of what the movie was doing towards the end. Like all the stakes were taken out. It still works on its own, but it's a much better movie. Uh, the funny thing is, though, in some of his other films, I actually prefer the theatrical Terminator 2 over the extended one. Uh, I think the pacing's better. I think the reason why he took those scenes out actually comes across in the in the final movie. I, I think it just is better paced, for example. So sometimes it actually makes it a bit more bloated, and that's why it was taken out. But Yeah, I think a lot of times, like, uh, yeah, you know, a director's cut, extended cut, or whatever, like, all it is is just the same movie with a couple more scenes thrown in. And a lot of times you can tell... The reason why they are cut, or you know how they don't fit into the movie. Well, obviously, sometimes horror movies it was for violence, and you want the violence back in, so you obviously that's the better sure, cut. Yeah. Um, usually, I, if it unrated cut is usually uh, maybe what you know might get me a little more excited because that, that that's usually and in terms even of then, Tim, that, that is a, a mistake to think like that because nine times mm-hmm. out of ten, when it says unrated cut. It's not actually for more violence. It's just because it's the it's an extended cut, and they wanted to call it that because it sounds like it's got more uh, violence. It sounds like they're, they're doing more extreme stuff, but it's actually not. Here, here's an extra take of an actor cracking a joke. Oh, it's the unrated <laughs> cut because officially it is unrated. They, they didn't get it rated by the MPA, so mm-hmm. it's officially unrated. But it's not actually because of any of the violence or anything like that. It's just I got you. So not to say there aren't any proper examples because there are, but uh, another example of a really but big difference with the director's cut is a uh, cinema paradiso, which obviously is a bit more highbrow than the examples we've said, but that is a fantastic <laughs> film. And the theatrical cut misses a lot of a good chunk of the meat towards the end. So again, I would recommend the uh, director's cut of that. So there are examples. There are examples where I would say, no, watch the director's cut and never watch the, the theatrical cut. Not because the theatrical cut is terrible, but just because the director's cut is the one. Like that's the, that's the one mm-hmm. to watch, but sometimes it's not. And, uh, Long story short, the producer's <laughs> cut of this Halloween 6 is still garbage. Uh, giving Michael Myers a cult connection, giving him a reason to be a killer, giving him allies, like you know, especially in the producer's <laughs> cut, that scene that the ritual, he's standing in a room just standing there with a cult leader and like tons of other people in costume mm-hmm. all working together. That's not Michael Myers. It's not the shape. It just isn't. Mm-hmm. And Also, uh, it's one of those things where you know, I, I'm glad they didn't do this, but it's not like there had ever been, you know, uh, any hint of this in any of the other movies except for, you know, the ending of the last one. But, mm. like, it, it would have been one thing if there was maybe, like, a, a little 
weird nod or like you know some throwaway scene in the first movie that they're expanding upon like I, I don't know if there was some slight cause or reason to have it uh maybe it'd be a little more justifiable but with with this it's like it's nothing it's uh i, I don't know it, and it's not like um i'm trying to think if there's like other you know like horror villains or icons or something that maybe have superpowers that you could be like oh like this would be a, a, a way to explain why this guy can do this or that or whatever but yeah, Michael Myers has never really been someone that you think like that with. The only thing this would have worked with me with would be a, an original character. I feel like there's mm-hmm. not a single slasher villain that you could take and say, oh, this is going to be retconned into their backstory and I'd be okay with it. I, th- I feel like it would it would just feel lame for all of them. I can't think of any that I'd be like, oh, Freddy Krueger used to be in a cult, which is why he came back. And <laughs> James like, oh, go away. <laughs> like, just, no. Not surprisingly, this ended up being quite a meaty discussion. Uh, mm. A lot of ranting on my part, but this movie gets it out of me. I, I like. I, I will next year when we get to the remakes, there'll be a lot of ranting in those two. Uh, mm-hmm. But this, this is like proper crappy sequel rant where they try to tie it into something, and it's it's really bad '90s supernatural crap mixed in with a Halloween movie. <laughs> and there's some okay scenes in it, like there's some okay kills, there's some okay suspense. But it's wrapped up in a plot that doesn't progress properly. It's not written in a way. It, the last like twenty minutes is an edited mess. Uh, things don't pay off. The, you know, things just don't make sense. And then on top of all that, but the, the worst sin of all is you try to give Michael Myers a reason. You try to give him mm-hmm. this retcon backstory, which robs him of what makes him special in the first place. Anything else you'd like to talk about before we get to ratings, Tim? Mm. I mean. I do kind of like that it makes you so mad. That's one thing that it has going for you. <laughs> At least it causes you some displeasure. Oh, it does, Tim. <laughs> oh, it does. That said, I don't even hate it as much as I used to. The existence mm-hmm. of the Rob Zombie movies instantly makes this kind of just a laughable side experiment yeah. once upon a time. Yeah, I definitely don't like this. Uh, but again, like I, I mentioned before, I don't have a, as much of a connection to this franchise. Uh, like, I definitely like movies in it, but, you know, uh, it's not one that I am like, oh man, this is like my favorite character, my favorite icon, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, well, Tim, Tim, I feel like you've said this about a few franchises recently. What is your franchises? Nightmare on oh, Elm that... Street and like yeah, but... Leprechaun? Well, uh... <laughs> I like Lumber kind of like kind of a, a cheesy way, but like Nightmare on Elm Street, that's a you know my big franchise. Uh, that's like my number one in terms of like you know the big classic uh, you know horror uh, icons. Uh, if you want to go like a little more um, outside the wall, uh, then you could also include like Phantasm and um, I guess Evil Dead uh, in that. Um, okay. Okay. But, uh... Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just just in the way that like I, I feel like most people usually will have like a one specific franchise that holds a, a place near and dear in their heart. And um, although I really like some Halloween movies, like really, really like a, a few of them um, and then other ones I, I you know still enjoy watching. But it's not something that like, yeah, if you mess up the character, that's annoying. But, you know, it, it doesn't hit me on like a, a gut level, you know? The writer of this movie, possibly the director, should be taken out and shot for their crimes against humanity. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm joking, well, of course, but... Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, please. I, I hope our fans aren't <laughs> out in the streets. Uh, <laughs> <I hear> that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I hate it so much. Halloween 6 is a mess of a film. Mm-hmm. And the producers cut, well, not as much of a mess in like, a sort of like payoff and editing point of view... It's still a bad movie. It's still got bad ideas. I hate it. All right. So with that said, Tim, let's rate yeah. this some bitch out of 10. So what are you giving it? Um, well, I'm going to give it a a few points uh, at, at the very least for uh, the kills, which I, I'd actually go ahead and say I liked all of the kills. Like there are some that, oh, that stood out more than others, but I didn't think there were any that were really that bad. Um so I would say it has that going for it. And um, in a way, I could see this as maybe being like a fun movie to 
watch and yell at with your friends. And um, I do love Paul Rudd, but he's he, terrible. He really in this. wasn't good in this. No, yeah, he like, is bad I, in this. Like his like he, like his blank stares. He's like telling you something, you know, about the cult and the myth and like. Michael Myers is going to come back. I, His work's not done here yet. He's, he's really bad in this. Yeah, uh, and w one thing I love is seeing like comedic actors in early uh, horror roles. But yeah, this was uh, pretty bad. I wonder if it was he just got really bad direction, or if he was trying to go for something that he's not really good at, like this weird intense thing. But um, I, I was kind of happy to see him, and then that quickly <laughs> extinguished. But uh, overall, I'm going to give it uh three just for those few happy points i guess uh mostly the kills uh but yeah overall this was a pretty big mess yeah I i'm pretty similar i feel like you try and justify it because you think i'm going to be mad at you for the score you give and then i give it a similar <laughs> score uh I, I can't i can't go too much lower than a three because i feel like again it's it does have some positive points i did like a couple of the kills i did like some of the sequences um and it is a kind of an interesting movie just in a, like what were they thinking kind of idea mm -hmm. so at least in that sense like i can't rate it as low as what i might rate some you know some remakes that are coming up next year <laughs> for this franchise um or stuff like the bye bye man it's, it's kind of funny like watching this now and being like as bad as this is this is still much better than the bye bye man yeah there's something i was thinking so about weird. the other day uh, while I was watching it is no matter how shitty these movies get, like I, I do have a soft spot in my heart for like bad uh, franchise sequels. Uh, there's something I kind of find oddly comforting about them. Um, Cause I, I feel like you don't get it with like later remakes and reboots of franchises, but I don't know, these shitty sequels that are still in the continuity, no matter how bad they get, uh, maybe it just makes me nostalgic for, like, you know, when I was young and renting them from the video yeah, store or something. I, I but... think that is, that is as, as much as I hate this movie, there's an on nostalgia of discovering it and hating it. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have fun, not, not fun memories, but, like, I remember, like, watching this after five, which I also, uh, which I already didn't like, and then this was just like, what is this? Like, one thing I'm actually kind of excited to do, because uh, like I mentioned, these were like one of my big blind spots in the franchise, four, five, and six. And uh, I was kind of waiting to, you know, watch them for the first time for the show instead of binging them. But now that we've watched them, I do kind of want to go back and watch them all together. Uh, and maybe, you know, now that they are, uh, I've got the first viewing out of my head, watch them again to, I don't know, make a you know, a clearer analysis of where they stack up in the series as a whole for me, but um, not about to do that right away. <laughs> no, I, although I think when we do Resurrection, we might rank the uh, the original eight, because obviously as much as mm -hmm. the two, as, you know, it was reset. Like, well, that said, technically H2O also kind of resets it, because H2O, mm -hmm. this film's so bad that H2O decided to ignore everything past two. H2O mm -hmm. is a direct sequel to Halloween 2, and ignores three through six, uh, probably for the better. Which I, I've always referred to it as it's a, it's a branching continuity. Like if you want, you can go with four, and then maybe five and six. Although I quite like to end it at four. Um, but or you could go to H two O, and you also have like another trilogy. So you can either have one two four or one two mm H two -hmm. O, and they both kind of work as trilogies. And funnily enough, we're going to have a third option because Jamie Lee Curtis is back <laughs> for Halloween Returns, or maybe they'll change the name, but that's currently I think the working title. Uh, and she's back, it's 40 years later, and it seems like they're ignoring everything after 2, including H2O, <laughs> which is really weird. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I think that's kind of funny. Uh, so yeah, just just to confirm it, yeah, my rating's also 3 out of 10, uh, for, the, for, the, for the record. Yeah. Uh, so 3 for the theatrical, and uh, 8.5 for the producer. <laughs> uh, 3 for the theatrical, and then I'm almost say, tempted to say 2.5 for the producer's cut, <laughs> just out of spite, because everyone who says it's better is on crack. <laughs> uh, no, I, not, I do... well, not, not everyone says it's better, because it is tech, and, and a technical level it is better. But to everyone who says it's actually a good movie and it's worth watching, you're on crack, right? What was your point, Tim? I apologize. I'm just I'm really heated about this one. Oh no, I was just gonna say I do still want to see the producer's cut. Uh, I don't have like. 
high hopes for it or anything, but um, I don't know. I might try to see if I know someone that I can borrow it from, or um, I don't know if they have it like for a, you know, um, purchase like just that one version or, or something. But, oh, there's you, you you had to buy the big box set that was yeah. really expensive to get it. So yeah, that was that was my uh, that actually really annoyed me when I bought the uh, block box set. I think it was last year. Um, and uh yeah it was a it was a lot more expensive it, like if, if something's like 10 15 bucks more or whatever you know i'll go with a special edition but i think it was like almost twice as expensive i was like screw that um they were milking but, it and they knew people would buy it because it had the precious cup that was such a special thing for a lot of people like no nah, they were going to make bank yeah. on that so <laughs> hey ho that that is that has been halloween six the curse of michael myers the curse of you know late movie franchise sequels this one uh so no uh so if you've seen it if you're unfortunate enough to have seen halloween 6 uh let us know what you think of it in the comments below um, i'm expecting one or two angry comments telling us that producers cut is actually a good movie it's not <laughs> uh, we've made that very clear uh sure technically it's better it's not as much of an edited mess and it does actually explain why they want the kids and stuff but i still hate everything about it the ideas are horrible yeah don't belong in a Halloween movie. We're done. Uh, we'll post uh, Pete's address in the comments below. If you uh, feel strongly about it, you can show up at his house late at night and uh, let's see what happens. They're going to get. They're going to get quite a show, Tim. You watch it. You look at my middle. My, my, my middle. My window at night. You look at my window at night. You're going to get a show. <laughs> oh man. There's fireworks and. Sorry lights and there's a disco show and it's so it's quite it's quite the quite the turnout quite the experience tantalizing <laughs> oh you will be um so where was i in my in my my plugging so like subscribe mm -hmm. all that stuff get us on twitter at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates if you want to support the channel head over to patreon.com slash mail tv you can do that over there you get bonuses you get to vote once a month uh, in the five dollar tier for an episode of streams of the following uh, and actually, I've actually I've I've been thinking of a new idea. Uh, Weird. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of a small thing, but kind of a cool thing uh, that people might be interested in. You're um, gonna sacrifice a baby. <laughs> yeah, you're you're firstborn. Uh, oh no. <laughs> uh, no. So I was thinking. I don't know. What, I don't have a name for it yet. I'm gonna have a name for it, and I'll have it for both streams and in flux. But basically, like people, because people often like will say in the comments, "Oh, you should do this movie. You should do that movie." Basically, just people can submit movies that'll get added to the, the the list, like the official kind of like to do list. Now, they won't always necessarily get done, and some of them, like maybe they'll instead of like actually doing them, they'll pop up in a vote. Maybe they'll, oh, we'll take four of the the suggested movies and put them in a vote one month for the patrons. Uh, but the idea that they can just like submit movies to an ongoing list there that it will have like so. On because sometimes me and Tim will go. Oh, we don't we don't know what to do next week, and we'll we'll just look and see what's coming out, or we'll maybe so or maybe we should finally do a movie like that, or you know maybe we can just look at the list and go. Oh no, we'll do one from the the, the submitted list that people want us to cover at some point. Mm. Uh, I don't have a name for it yet, and it'll it'll just be in the five dollar tier with everything else uh, and mm. on Patreon, but we can have like a, a working list that we can keep adding to that might spiral out of control because I feel like there's there's one or two of our viewers. Who I feel like will probably submit like fifty movies on their own. Uh, you know who you are. Mm. I know. I'm looking forward to uh, submitting. <laughs> you don't have time. You submit anyway. You, you, is that your <laughs> yeah, way of you saying that? Listen to me. <laughs> is that your way of saying that I don't listen to your suggestions? Okay. <laughs> Expect a lot more anime and uh, <laughs> uh, what else do I like? Uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> Coming up, video game adaptations. Definitely leprechaun movies. I just thought of one last thing to say about Halloween Six. Actually, they like to uh -oh. do. This movie has a lot of thunder and lightning in it. It thunders. It, there's got. A, they've got a thunder and lightning storm two nights in a row, <laughs> and every time it strikes lightning, you can see Michael for a split second, then it goes away. They do, they do that like five times in this movie. Huh. And it's okay. It was, it was fine the first like two times, but then it was like, okay, <laughs> you've done this already like multiple times. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, so yeah, so that was the, that was the thing. If, if that sounds interesting, if you're cool with that idea, then let us know. If you if you if the idea of adding to the sort of the t to do list that we you know and we won't do them in order or anything. We'll just be like the case of oh we can look at the list 
is, does any of these jump out at us and we can do them but it's the idea we have a working list that we can keep going back to if we if we're running out of ideas or uh you know we've, we've got a free slot and we say oh we'll do one of the with the user kind of like picked mm-hmm. ones uh and then we can we can hate you if we can hate <laughs> that's the plan uh so yeah so that's everything uh of course it's still october still doing a bunch of extra episodes like we say you can expect halloween h2o and resurrection uh, before the end of the month you can also expect the final of our top 100 horror movies videos we've got three parts up already part four will be coming on halloween itself tim you're, you're thinking of something i can see it in your face i i, I also just remembered something I think it was about this movie. Uh, so, sometimes you, I get confused. You, you think it's about this movie? There, there was a there was a, a Beavis and Butthead impression in it, right? Doesn't doesn't at one point one of the characters say like, Haha, "That's cool." Maybe the brother, maybe. I uh, I think so. That that's why I was confused for a second. But hey, I mean, lay off me. Like sometimes we have to watch like three movies a night, <laughs> and I, I get them mixed up a little bit. I'm pretty, 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 pretty sure there was. Uh, it doesn't matter if it, either way, I guess, if it, if it isn't. But there you <laughs> go. That that has been our 75-minute discussion of Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. This but, is a theatrical cut. If you want the producer's cut of this review, <laughs> can uh, support us. <laughs> on, on Patreon, we'll come back. We'll, yeah. yeah, we'll come back <laughs> and watch the, pa- the producer's cut and talk about that in depth. <laughs> Although, I don't know if we have much left to say because we've already talked about a lot of the differences in this, but... <laughs> Uh, I mean, it'll just cut to us in a car. Uh, if, if we had time, I would have maybe considered watching both cuts. But you know, we've been doing a lot of movies. We don't have time to watch movies twice for this. So, yeah. but there you go. So that, that is it. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching scary movies. We're almost nearing the end of the month. So uh, thank you for joining us on this ride. We will see you next time. Goodbye.